Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? What's up, y'all? Um, man, it, it feels like it has been forever that we've been locked in for um, Real Talk Tuesday. Um, we've been grinding over here. There's been a lot going on, lots of work. Uh, February was crazy. Um, March was just as crazy um but but constantly busy brand new what's up everybody brand new book coming out um man it, it feels like brand new book coming out um in in the fall uh so um i'm, I'm really excited about that just just finished up the the manuscript for that um and so we've been we've been real busy we've been we've been we haven't been here, but we've been very, very busy. So I'm really excited about um, what's happening and glad that we are back. Listen, um, so much, so much that we have to talk about. I, I reached out to some of you guys and asked you, I reached out to all of you and asked you um, what you wanted to talk about. What what are some things that you wanted to, um, to study? And I got some, I got a lot of feedback and so uh, I'm looking forward to what it is that we are going to uh, spend this time uh, 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 seeking God about. Um, I'm really, uh, really amped about where we're starting, our starting point, because we start talking about prayer. And I've always wanted, I've always wanted this space to be uh, practical, useful, um, and, and something that you can use day to day. Uh, when you leave here. And so I realized that so a friend of mine reached out and said, look, um, it'd, be, it'd be really helpful to, to talk about some practical uh, keys to effective prayer. Um, so I know, I know a lot of people uh, pray, like whether you, whether or not you are uh, super spiritual or, you know, church goer every week, every time the church door opens or you are a hardened criminal. I know people pray because we all feel like um, we, we, we stand in need sometimes. So it's not a matter of just simply whether or not we pray, but, but how we pray, right? So I want us to talk about how we pray. And, um, and, and so I'm, I'm, I'm excited. So, so for the next few weeks, we're gonna talk about prayer and, 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 and old folks that used to say, if you, if you know the word of prayer, right? If you know how to get a prayer through, so we, so we're gonna talk about uh, effective prayer, keys to keys to powerful prayer. Um, I, I want to start by just talking about um, uh, uh, something that's kind of funny um, that I remember uh, a, as a kid. Um, Homer Simpson used to always um, he used to always pray before he um, before he consumed some donut or, or something like that he he would pray uh, Lord if you don't want me uh, to eat this if you want me to eat this send no sign <laughs> and then obviously the Lord wouldn't answer so he would <laughs> he would proceed to consuming, the uh the 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 donut or or you know eating whatever it was that 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 he had in his hands um obviously that's that's not the way that we want to pray right we want to uh we want to pray heartfelt prayers that are meaningful and that are powerful especially when we when we actually stand in in need and so i want us to talk about um keys to prayer and what what we're going to do is we're going to look at some effective prayers by some powerful prayers um, and and see if we can extrapolate see if we can pull out some some principles and some um some keys to help us be effective all right so before we go any further let's let's pray god thank you uh for this time that we have to 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 look into the word and to to gain some insight and to study and to grow we pray that you would Give us wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So we are looking at 
once again, effective and powerful prayers. And so I want you to look with me in First Chronicles 29. First Chronicles 29. And this is a really powerful uh, story because it 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 tells the story of of the temple and 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 King David. Um, and the the chapter starts out with this um kind of this interesting preface i, I want to read it it says then king david said to the whole assembly my son solomon the one whom god has chosen is young and inexperienced the task is great but because this palatial structure is not for man but for the lord god with all the resources i have provided for the temple of my god gold for the gold work silver for the silver bronze for the bronze iron for the iron wood for the wood as well as onyx for the settings turquoise stones of very co various colors and all kinds of fine stone and marble all of these in large quantities besides in my devotion to the temple of god i now give my personal treasures of gold and silver for the temple of God over and above everything I provided for this temple. So basically what's happening is that there's this changing of the guard, right? That Solomon, David is retiring. And, and what you find is that uh, later on in the chapter, David actually dies. This is the end of first Chronicles, the last chapter in first Chronicles, David dies and Solomon becomes king, right? And so before he becomes king, David kind of has this uh, uh, grand handing over of the keys, right? So he hands him the keys and he hands him all these resources. He said, all right, your first order of business, son, is to, is to, to, to build this temple. And I remember I had that experience as a pastor. I, I was handed the keys of the church and they had saved all this money to, to renovate the sanctuary, to renovate the church. The church hadn't, hadn't been renovated since it was built. And um, when I got the keys, I had the mandate on day one, your job while you are here is to, is to renovate this building. Thankful to God that we had, uh, that, that we did renovate the church in about um, eight or nine months, but it was, it was pressure. When you when you're walking into a situation that you did not build, you, you know, you, you're taking over someone else's responsibility, but it's your responsibility to do something major like renovate the temple, renovate the church. In this case, it was his job to build the church. And so um, Solomon's got to get it done. As David is past, passing the torch um, and passing over all these building materials, all these resources, um, he says this prayer of prayer of of I, I guess it's it's, it's kind of like his last um, last request to God, you know, about about the temple. It's kind of profound. So I want us to look at this prayer because it it I think it has some powerful powerful insights and meaning. It starts in verse 10. It's David's prayer. David praised the Lord in the presence of the assembly saying, praise be to you, Lord, the God of and father of Israel, the God of our father Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Yours, Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and to give strength and give strength to all. And I think this is the first place where we see um, what David deems as important with this prayer, right? He's basically affirming God. And, it, and if you wanna pray with power, you, you, you gotta affirm who God is. You establish 
that you know who God is and what God is about. That that David doesn't he he doesn't say anything that's that's new or 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 uh, or secret. He simply says, "Lord, we know wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power." to exalt and to give strength to all. It, it, I love how he, how he starts. Praise be to you, Lord, to the God, the God of our father Israel from everlasting to everlasting. Like David is simply, David is simply stating the truth. <laughs> and he's saying, God, we know who you are. We know who you are about. And we accept that you are God of the universe. And, um, I, there, there's a text in in Hebrews that um, for without faith it is impossible to to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And there is an there is a need for us to acknowledge that God is God and we are not right. Um, a little bit, a little bit further down, he he comes back to this idea, but that that there's this need to first and foremost, I need to establish that my mom used to say, "Who do you think you're talking to?" Like I need to establish that God is uh, who He says He is. That that I know that God is the source of strength. God is the source of wisdom. He is the source of everything that is good. He is the source of life that God is, you know, there's an old song, God is my all and all, right? And so David begins with uh, affirmations, if you will, affirming that God is. Rather than affirming who I am, let's affirm who, who God is. Let's keep, let's keep looking because the prayer is extremely powerful. He says in verse 13, now God, now our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. And man, you know what? I might well just go ahead and stop right there and say that because the next one is kind of is kind of clear what he's doing, right? He says, we give you thanks and we praise your glorious name. And it's so important for us to, to praise and lift God up, to, to adore God, because at the end of the day, um, I need to acknowledge that God has been God has been good to me, right? That um, I remember the old folks used to say, "Could have been dead, sleeping in my grave, but God told death, step back and behave," right? And it and it's cheesy, but the fact of the matter is, um, through danger seen and unseen, like they had all these ways of saying that God has been good to us. So not only is God, God, and there's no one like God, but then I need to establish that God is good. So God is God, but God is good. Right. And, and, um, I remember we, we were doing, working on this nonprofit and, and <laughs> listening to these, uh, these specialists talk about developing a nonprofit organization. And they say, one of the reasons why donors don't give back, don't give again, uh, don't give a second time is because nobody took the time to say thank you. And the fact of the matter is, if someone has been good to us, if someone has done something for us, helped us, donated to the cause or, or, or contributed, then, then we ought to say thank you. And, and the fact is, when I look at my life, when you look at your life, God has been good. Somebody put that in the chat, put that in the comments. God is good. God has been good to me. And I need to acknowledge that God has been good. And so this is a powerful way to acknowledge uh, or to, to add power to your prayers is to acknowledge that, that God has been good, that um, um, he's protected me on the highways, he's provided for my needs, God has uh, uh, protected the family. Man, we've been going through the pandemic and throughout the pandemic, God has demonstrated his faithfulness that um, um, what, I may have lost my job, um, I may have uh, had some family members who were sick, um, but with everything that has happened, uh, God has demonstrated his great, his goodness, and his love and his mercy um, 
God has been good to us. And I, I look over uh, my life over the last six months, um, six months specifically, that uh, God has been very, very, very good to me. And so I'm mindful. And we, we have to acknowledge that in our prayers. If we're asking God for something, it might be wise for us to thank God for, <laughs> for his goodness. I see you, Dave. Thank God for his goodness. So let, let's go. Let's keep going because David is, David is getting real heavy in here now. He says, but who am I? Who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? Everything comes from you and we have given you only what comes from your hand. We are foreigners and strangers in your sight as we as were all our ancestors. Our days on earth are like a shadow without hope. Lord, our God, all this abundance that we have provided for the building of a temple for your holy name comes from your hand. It all belongs to you. And I guess this is a good place to stop right here and just acknowledge what, what David's doing. So, so you, have, you have the need to uh, affirm, affirm who God is, and then adore God. So praise God. So you're going to acknowledge that God is God. You're going to uh, extol and praise God for his goodness. But then there's the need to, to also um, not just uh, affirm and, and adore, but also avow, right? That I need to establish that it's not, it's, it's not me, it's not, I am, I am actually admitting that it's not me who deserves the glory, but, but rather God. So, so notice what, what he says here. He says, who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? Everything comes from you and we have given you only what comes from your hand. I, I love this part where he says, we are foreigners and strangers in your sight. Um, as were all of our ancestors, our days are like a shadow without hope. Lord God, all this abundance that we provided for the temple and it, for your holy name comes from your hand. So, so David is acknowledging that, you know, there's only, there's only one God. And even though we've given, we've given to the temple, we're only giving God back what belongs to him, right? We, we, we just foreigners and strangers. Now, now, one of the reasons why that's, that's significant too is that to say foreigners and strangers, David is actually saying, we ain't nothing but Gentiles, glorified Gentiles. And that was like a curse word. You know what I mean? He's, he's calling the people of God cursed of God. He's calling the people of God rejected of God because they believe that Gentiles were rejected. They believe that Gentiles were cursed. Foreigners is, is uh, Gentiles was the, was the kind of pejorative for, of foreigners. They, they, they're not just aliens, but they're rejected aliens. They're not just foreigners, but they're cursed foreigners. And so when he says, we ain't nothing but foreigners, we ain't nothing but strangers, he's saying, God, we, we avow, we admit that we are not it but you are. So, so it's one thing to say, God, we recognize that you are God, but it's another thing. It's another level to say, uh, you are God and we are not, right? And that even the good things that we have done here in giving of this, giving of ourselves for the temple, all it is, is a returning back to you what, what, what belongs to you. Um, I, I think it's such a powerful prayer that, that I am a, I'm acknowledging that God, I really need you. We really need you. Yes, we've given all these wonderful gifts, but God, we really need you because we we're not we're not giving of our greatness. We are giving back to you what you simply gave to us. We are giving not as the chosen of God. We just broke, busted, disgusted, can't be trusted, right? We're just foreigners in your sight. He says, I know my God that you test the heart and you are pleased with integrity. All these things I've given willingly and with honest intent. 
And now I have seen with joy how willingly your people who are here have given to the Lord. Um, it, it's important, he says, to establish our need of God. And um, God, we, 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 we promise, we avow, we attest that we cannot do this without you. God, you test the heart and you please with integrity. And all, we've given this with an honest intent and a, with a willing intent and an honest heart. But God, we need you to keep us. Verse 18, Lord, the God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, keep these desires and thoughts in the hearts of your people forever. God, we need you, all right? And keep their hearts loyal to you. And this is, this is probably my favorite part of this prayer. And give my son Solomon the wholehearted devotion to keep your commands, statutes, and decrees, and to do everything to build the palatial structure for which I have provided. I, man, I love that. I love that part. Like David basically ends his, his reign, ends his tenure as, as the king of, of Israel by, by asking God to cover his son. I, that, I mean, I think it's so profound. Like, so he set his son up for success. Um, but then as he's exiting, he prays this prayer of, of devotion to God. I remember these, the three keys, right? Affirm, adore, and avow. So the prayer is so simple. He's just like, God, thank you, right? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because everything we have, everything we see here is really just because of you. And God, we need you, right? God, you are God. God, you are good. God, we are not, right? And, and God, we really need you. And so at the end of that, um, you know, obviously the whole thing is about the temple. But then at the end of that, he says, God, I really, really want you to take care of my son. I mean, and obviously I can relate to that because I have a son, right? I have one son. That's him right there. That's him right there. And um, God, I want you to make him great, right? I want you to take care of him. I want you to cause him to, to walk in your ways. I want you to cause him to be faithful, to build up, build up this structure. And um, I want him to, to have wholehearted devotion to your commands, it says. Um, and then the Bible says, and then David said to the whole assembly, Praise, praise the Lord your God. So they all praise the Lord and the, the God of their fathers. They bow down, prostrating themselves before the Lord and King. I think it's it, I think it's one of the most profound and powerful prayers in, in all of scripture. I guess it's powerful in to me because of its simplicity that he just he just pray in prayer of thanks to God, really. It's, it's really thanks. And, and there's requests in there, obviously a request for his son, but it's really just a prayer like to thank God for his goodness and to acknowledge that everything comes from you, the powerful part, everything come from you, comes from you. And we have given you only what comes from your hand. Like God, we realize that it is not us. We are not the center. And, and in our prayers, we need to acknowledge that we are not the center, that God, I'm here right now. I'm, I'm reaching out to you, God. I'm looking up to you. I'm calling out to you because God, if you don't do it, if you don't do it, it ain't going to get done. God, if you don't come through, uh, we're going to be uh, lost and left out and broke down. Um, and I believe God always hears those kinds of prayers. When we establish that God is God, we are not, that God is good, that, that, that we are not God, that we, we have a great need for God. I believe God's ear is bent low for that. And then at the very end, um, after he prays for, for Solomon, I think this is a really powerful piece, right? He prays for Solomon and then Solomon takes over as king. It says the next day they made sacrifice to the Lord 
and presented burnt offerings to him. So there's all these burnt offerings and they, they ate and they drank with great joy in the presence of the Lord. And then they acknowledged Solomon, son of David, as king a second time, anointing him before the Lord to be ruler and Zadok, the priest, to be the priest. So it was powerful that David ended his reign with prayer. And then Solomon begins, and if you read, I'm going to challenge you to read, so this is the very last chapter of 1 Chronicles, Chronicles, 1 Chronicles 29, the very next chapter is 2 Chronicles 1, and that chapter begins with a prayer, and it begins with Solomon asking God for wisdom, and I think it's just so profound and powerful that David ends his reign with a prayer, and he prays for his son. And then Solomon begins his reign with a prayer um, and, and a prayer uh, nonetheless for wisdom. And um, I think about, I th when I think about prayer and particularly what we're talking about here, these, these three keys, right? That we, that we ought to, um, when we pray, that we ought to affirm God, affirm that, God is God, uh, adore God, that God is good, and, and, and then to avow that, that God, we are not, right? We are not, and we have need of you. And, and when I think about these kinds of powerful prayers, I think about um, the Cosby show, right? There's this there's this episode of the Cosby show where um, uh, Bill Cosby says, I did not have children so that you could change my name to dad can I, dad can I, dad can I. I did not have children so you can change my name to dad can I. And this prayer reminds me of that, of that, little, that little joke that Bill Cosby told that, that we often approach God with this, can I have, can I have, can I have, can I get, can I get, can I get. And God is like, I did not become God of the universe so that you can say, God, can I, right? That God, can I, but, but to acknowledge that God is and that God is good and that we have a need of God, that we are not God, I think is so, so powerful. It's so much more meaningful that, um, that, that, that we acknowledge that, that God is, God is great and that God God is good. Um, we used to we used to sing that sing that prayer in school um, before we eat. God is great. God is good. Let us thank Him for our food. Right by His hands we all are fed. Give us, Lord, our daily bread. It's it's a profound and simple prayer because it establishes those three things. God is great. So God is God. God is good. And then our need of God in that we are not, we are not God. Uh, any, any thoughts, questions, comments? I see you, Dave. Um, um, Mom Griffith, Griffith um, she says it speaks to the importance of teaching our children about prayer. Absolutely. That we establish that it's not just about asking, but it's about establishing, um, affirming that God, God is God. Any other thoughts and comments? Put your comments in the or questions in the comment section. For the next couple of weeks, as you are commenting, sharing your thoughts, for the next couple of weeks, we're going to be talking about prayer. I want us to um, spend some time. As a matter of fact, we talked about David tonight. So I want us to uh, look at look at Solomon and, you know, after David builds the temple, Solomon prayers this amazing prayer to dedicate the temple, right? So we will look at that prayer and then we'll look at, look at Jesus's, one of Jesus's great prayers. And then we'll look at, um, we'll look at maybe, maybe we'll look at the Lord's prayer. Okay. And, and it's called the Lord's prayer, but it should probably be called the disciples prayer right so so we're going to look at we're going to look at a few of the great and powerful prayers in scripture and uh and see what we can and see what we can glean 
All right, so I want to encourage you that all of our um, all of our studies are still uh, archived online. If you want to if you want to check them out, you can go to um, CC Think and Write to the um, to the to the YouTube page to my YouTube page or to the um, <clears throat> or to the the website CC Think and Write and um, go to the page where it says study, uh, Real Talk Tuesday or Tuesday study. And uh, you can check out all the, all the past, all the past studies. Once again, um, let's pray, let's keep studying together and let's pray with power, all right? Let's, let's pray, God, thank you so much for your goodness and your grace. Thank you that you are God. And thank you because you are good. And God, we recognize that, that we are not and we stand in great need of you. We pray, God, that you would keep us until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. And um, I'll see you next week uh, for Real Talk Tuesday.